But we've uh, proud to have our CyberKnife unit here in Ottawa for the last 18 months. Uh, we've treated now over 500 patients on the unit. Um, we've been able to offer a CyberKnife treatment for a broad range of cancers. We treat a lot of brain tumors, spine tumors, lung tumors. Uh, we've done some pioneering work with uh, kidney cancer and liver tumors, and we've recently been treating some prostate cancer patients as well on CyberKnife. Um, we've had dramatic benefits for a lot of our patients uh, with uh, excellent tumor control, excellent palliation of symptoms in, in patients who needed palliative treatments. Um, the CyberKnife is basically it's a, a robotic radiation machine. Uh, the giant robotic arm there is the same robotic arm that helps to build your BMW or Mercedes Benz. Um, and mounted on the end of it here is a radiation gun. Um, the robotic arm, uh, first of all, the patient normalized on the bed uh, here with a mobilization device. And then the robotic arm simply rotates about and fires a teeny beam of radiation from all different directions in on the tumor. Um, before a beam is fired, then we have an image guidance system to make sure the beam is accurately lined up within a millimeter's accuracy. Uh, the treatments are typically outpatient based treatments. They take anywhere from about uh, 20 minutes to an hour and a half per day and they're typically done as one to five sessions. Um, again, depending on the tumor type and the tumor location and how big the lesion is, uh, that will dictate how many treatments the patient has. Again, this is all patient-based treatment as opposed to, um, again, conventional operations, which are obviously inpatient, uh, inpatient down and uh, uh, with, with stays in hospital. Um, we've had huge benefits for a broad range of uh, cancers. For example, in lung cancer, if we're treating an early stage lung cancer with conventional radiation, we only cure about 30% of those tumors. Whereas with the CyberKnife, we can do the same treatment in three days and we, our cure rates are raised to about 80%. Um, we're looking, we have very promising results as well in prostate cancer with uh, converting a seven and a half week program of radiation into a five session regimen. And we have some preliminary data showing it's very efficacious, at least as efficacious as conventional radiation uh, with, again, reductions in side effects and tremendous time savings for patients. In very eloquent regions of the brain and the skull base in particular, uh, again, these are tumors that we just can't operate on safely or we've been with surgery, we can only partially debulk a tumor. Uh, with CyberKnife, again, we can do uh, anything from one to five sessions of radiosurgery on these types of tumors very safely. And for a lot of these tumors, we have very high efficacy rates with 80, 80 to 90% long-term tumor control uh, with very good safety. Uh, we've treated, um, again, some children with uh, radio surgery, and for them this is nice to have an outpatient-based uh, treatment. Uh, it's very safe. We have had experience here at our center for almost 20 years now doing radio surgery before we had CyberKnife, and uh, for our brain cases we always had to bolt, actually bolt a, literally a frame to uh, patients' uh, heads for the, to keep the patient still. Because the CyberKnife um, has an image guidance system, we no longer have to bolt frames to patients' heads. And this is particularly, well, it's great for all patients, but particularly for our pediatric patients, where again, they can simply come as an outpatient. We simply keep them still with a plastic mold or shell or mask, and uh, the treatment's delivered in a non painful uh, manner. Again, as an outpatient, uh, we are participating in a lot of cutting edge research uh, at our center and on CyberKnife. Um, we're participating in two, uh, research trials involved with uh, lung cancer, involved with liver tumors, kidney tumors, pancreatic cancer, and prostate cancer, as well as spine and brain tumors. Um, these are very exciting and very important to do. Um, the, um, uh, for some tumors, again, it looks very promising for, uh, you know, for lung, lung cancer. Again, it appears to be as efficacious as uh, surgery during cybernetic treatment. We really need to have our document or prove that in a trial setting. That's what we're doing. We are doing a comparative trial where we'll compare surgery to CyberKnife rate of surgery uh, for early stage lung cancer uh, to get a document its uh, true efficacy. Uh, similar trials are being done again in prostate cancer where we're um, looking at uh, very shortened fraction or very shortened courses of radiotherapy over about five, five days as opposed to seven and a half weeks. Again, trying to prove its efficacy and um, compared to conventional radiation or conventional surgery. But we're pretty confident that the CyberKnife actually will show it to be uh, at least as efficacious and safer with safe, as safe as um,
conventional radiation and with dramatic time saving and cost savings for patients. Um, so my name is John Sinclair and I'm a neurosurgeon at the Ottawa Hospital. And I uh, actually trained in terms of my residency in medical school in Ottawa. And when I completed my neurosurgical training, I decided to go to California to Stanford University to do a fellowship in a special area of neurosurgery called cerebrovascular neurosurgery. And it was there that um, I was first exposed to the CyberKnife and the concept of radiosurgery. CyberKnife being traditionally a neurosurgical um, uh, tool for the treatment of brain tumors um, is something that um, most neurosurgeons are, are familiar with. When I was at our, uh, a bunker very similar to this bunker watching um, a few treatments for some of the patients that we were treating with vascular malformations, I noticed that there were um, surgeons there from different disciplines, thoracic surgeons and general surgeons, and I realized that they were actually treating patients uh, for cancers outside of uh, the head, which was a, a completely novel concept. And I inquired a little bit about this and uh, learned about the, the concept of frameless um, radiosurgery and the ability to offer radiosurgery um, to other parts of the body. And it was at that point that I realized I wanted to stay on for an extra year and learn this technique. And this is where the CyberKnife was born at Stanford University. And so I trained with the inventor of the CyberKnife, Dr. John Adler, uh, for an, uh, an entire year. And when I was looking uh, where to come back to and work. Um, having grown up in Ottawa, my very first thought was to come back to Ottawa and to try and bring this, this technology um, back to Canada. At the time when I came back in 2005, there wasn't a cyber knife in Canada. So I began a process of uh, collaborating with my peers at the Ottawa Hospital and working with Cancer Care Ontario to um, bring about a, um, a plan to actually have the cyber knife technology approved for use in, in Ontario. And couple of years, we were very fortunate with the help of the community to uh, obtain the funds to actually uh, buy one of these machines and uh, have it brought here to Ottawa. Another one was also placed in, in Hamilton. And since uh, almost two years ago, we've treated uh, close to 500 patients. And uh, it's been a, quite a remarkable uh, journey for, for the Ottawa Hospital and for myself personally in the development of this uh, uh, technique.